you feeling? I feel great. Uh, excited. Uh, what's today? Tuesday? Well, no, Wednesday. I uh, had a great Wednesday practice. I uh, just decided to be out there with my teammates today. Uh, definitely got better. So just excited and uh, ready for meetings the rest of the day and dinner. So just enjoy the day, man. You think it's going to happen Sunday? I don't know, man. I'll just take it one day at a time. Just excited for the meeting later to uh, watch the tape with my coaches and see where I can get better at from today's practice. How much are you each of I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's been a long time. I haven't played since the Cotton Bowl, but at the end of the day, um, I'm just on my journey right now, and um, whatever we see best for the team, I'm going to do. So just focus on being the best Darius today. How have you done, have you done mentally? Just yeah. Because you've got personal stuff and mm. any injuries. So just how are you doing now? Uh, I said I'm doing great. Um, it's been a lot, like you said, a lot of ups and downs, but just pray about it. Uh, I have great teammates that support me. Uh, everyone in the Cardinals, uh, from Mr. Bidwell, uh, Monty, JG, my coach, like everyone's done everything to support me. And I'm just so thankful for them, Nick. And, um, you know, I'm in a good headspace. I'm just uh, excited for today. How much does that support mean to you? Oh, it means everything. Uh, I mean, these guys, uh, they drafted me. So, I mean, I owe them everything once I sign my contract because they brought me here, so I'm going to give my very best each and every day. And uh, I'm just so thankful for them because they're the same people from uh, the draft room in Indy So um, when we first met. So, you know, I'm just glad to have their support throughout the, all these things. Did you get started a little later than you expected? You were yeah. here to now be in a good headspace. What did it take for you to get to that point and just kind of accept things for what they were? Yeah, honestly, my faith, um, believing in God, and then also the great people at the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, like I said, from Mr. Bidwell, all the coaches, Monty, everyone was always supporting me, my teammates. So I uh, just have a great group of people here to help support me, and, uh, you know, I owe it to them. So I'm just excited to, um, whenever it's time, be ready to go and put on, you know. After the injury happened, did, did you expect it to be this long until you'd be really back being able to do anything again? Um. Not really. I mean, with injuries, anything can happen. Um, we didn't have any setbacks or anything. We knew the timeline when I got hurt. So uh, we just took it one day at a time and got better each day. What would it like to come back to that one time? Oh, heartbreaking. Because uh, I th knew all the work that we put in beforehand. But like I said, we didn't have any setbacks. We knew what the injury was and the timeline was. But I'm just glad to go to practice today. Like, um, you really cherish those moments more than ever when it gets taken away from you. Practicing two times in a row now, does that kind yeah. of like another hurdle for you? And yeah. I mean, every day I can come in here and I feel good. I can leave the building healthy, start healthy. It's a blessing. So, um, yeah, just got to finish today in meetings. and. Worry about tomorrow, tomorrow, but I just want to have a great meetings today. How does where the team is in the standings affect your excitement? Oh, it's uh, so positive. Like, we have some great players here, and, you know, being on the sideline, you get to see everybody up close. Like, Buddha, like, bro, he's the best player I think I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so uh, it's great to know that the vets here, are, they're legit who they are. So I'm just super excited to join them when it's time. Are you worried about Rust at all when you get back in the field again? Uh, no, because we've been working so hard in the rehab. People don't realize when you hurt, you work out, you lift and run twice as much as everybody else. But at the end of the day, you know, we got to go out and compete against somebody else. So I'm not really too concerned. I just got to keep stacking reps and having good practices. You've talked about the support from the organization, but yeah. what about from your rookie classmates? How, oh, yeah. how have they been with you? Oh, uh, They've been awesome, always texting me, always checking in on me. Honestly, it felt like seeing them play on Sundays, I was playing through them, just seeing everybody have their success, and I'm um, just super glad for my teammates to support me. What was it like mentally to, to be a few days away from making this yeah. NFL debut you had dreamed of for, for your whole life, and then it got pushed back indefinitely? Yeah. How did you kind of go through that process in those first couple of days after being Yeah, uh, I definitely saw I was probably heartbroken the first day, but then again, we knew the timeline of the injury, so all I knew was I had time to get better. Um, it was a little bit long, but just, we knew what it was, so um, just excited for this moment because I really cherish it more than ever because it was taken away from me for so long, so just super excited to be back out there. It's been a minute since you've played, and you've been talking about meetings and practice, you're smiling. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to put it into words. You know, when it's time, I'll just put it on tape. So uh, that's all I'm concerned about. Was, was, was the plan to come back and try it out at that point? And, or was that just kind of, were you aiming to come back then? Yeah. Um, 
We was just trying to go to practice. We was just trying to get better that day. Uh, I don't really have a full answer on that, but um, you know, it just didn't go well that Tuesday practice. But we're here at uh, this Wednesday practice, so <laughs> I'm glad we made it to this day and just super excited for the future. When you were coming out in the draft, you talked about um, we we heard all the about the prep and how much you put into it off the field, yeah. the, the study. How did that look when you weren't? on the field. Did you still go through yeah. every single meeting, every single game plan? Yeah, it looked the exact same. I'll show you my notebook, but um, <laughs> it was honestly more exciting because I was able to see from a fan's perspective, but also see from this is how what Buddha does and just see how he operates and see how the team operates. So I still took my notes like I was playing. I still did walkthroughs like I was playing so that when it is time for me to go, there isn't any hiccups. So um, and then also seeing the great players around me here at the Cardinals go through their process. But now I was just super excited, man. And um, yeah, I'm excited for meetings later today. <laughs> Ferris, with all that's writing for the rest of the seven games you guys have, it, how do you stay focused on just one game, one day at a time? I think continuing to have the same kind of mindset we've had before. Again, the only thing that matters right now is the special teams meeting that's coming up next. You know what I mean? I think that's the mindset that guys on the team are continuing to have right now. We're not even trying to think about what's coming after that, you know? You know he said he, meant, he thought that you've made some strides in the last month. How do you feel? Where do you think your game has gone? Um... Again, I'm, I'm, I like where I'm starting to trend, um, but I also like that there's so much more for me to show. There's so much more consistency for me to put on tape. So um, I think that's, that's like the exciting part is I'm not all the way there yet, but I'm able to create some positive results. Um, but again, just continuing to stay in the lab because you have to work for it every week. So um, again, I'm just trying to be the best version of myself in these next meetings. And then tomorrow's practice and do it again, and then I'll feel good about it again and I have to re-earn it. You know, so that's kind of the mindset, but I do appreciate, you know, hearing that, but still more work to do. Being over. Yeah, you know what I mean? I don't really look, I mean, I don't really look at the standings too much. I don't think anybody else does, you know. I kind of get my updates on how we're doing in terms of standings from the Cardinals fan groups on Instagram. I'm in all the, I'm, I'm in the group chats. Sometimes I message them and I'm like, yo. And I'll just see like where we were at if the playoffs started or something or hype and stuff. It's kind of where I find out how we're doing in terms of that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So the fans kind of keep me in the loop. <laughs> what group chats are you in? Uh, some Cardinals group group chats, like fan group chats. They always invite the players. But I'm always the one to like, you know, actually accept the invitation. And like every now and then I'll just like drop a message for the, you know, for the boys or the girls in the chat, you know, it's, yo, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I mean, it's it's exciting environment to play in. You know, I look forward to going back up there. You know, last time wasn't the result that we wanted, but again, there was. You know, our mindset is, you know, the playing in our division is everything. So going up there with attitude is what we look forward to most. Uh, here we are, year two of your career, over halfway through. What does leadership mean to you, and how have you kind of? Uh, maybe walk toward being more of a leader than you were maybe a rookie. Year. Yeah, um, I think it's a, I think it's like half and half of, you know, you want choosing to step into that role and half being kind of chosen to be in that role after getting to respect to your teammates. I think it's something that you have to show first on the field for them to rally behind you before you step into that role kind of with words and whatnot. Again, I feel like I'm not the big speech guy on the team. I'm, I'm kind of more so 15 minutes before you get the game started, I'm just yelling, you might understand me, you might not. It's kind of my role, you know what I mean? And then during the game, really starting to keep everybody calm, try not to get too high. We do something that's great, you know, laughing on the side, kind of trying to kill all that. Like, yeah, let's act like this is the first, first drive of the game, you know what I mean? So I feel like everyone's kind of different, you know? Taylor talked about the offensive line as being a great group of guys, fun, Fun to be around, but serious and tough when it gets between the lines. Is that the way you describe the offensive line group? I mean, yeah, I mean, if your offensive line is described as anything other than tough, you probably need a new offensive line group. You know what I mean? So uh, that, that's something you would hope, you know, to hear, you know. But you said you guys are fun off the field. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, um, I would say, you know, the, I think that the, you know, I would tell the guys all the time, um, out of all the lines I've, 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 that I've been able to play with, I think this group is the funniest group. I think it's the closest group as well. But I think we have a lot. I think we have, you know, the, the, the amount of fun we have is why 
we have to choose to real lock in as much. You know what I mean? Because the most random thing would be funny. Or, All right, stay in the moment. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I started reeling back in. So, but I do love the guys I get to play next to. You know. At what point on game day does the switch flip from fun Paris to I'm gonna rip your face off Paris? Um, I think it switches from uh, that that Tuesday at home on Call of Duty to that Wednesday morning when I drive here for that first meeting. I think that's when that switch that switch kind of flips. You know what I mean? You gotta switch early in the week. You know what I mean? Tuesday. Tuesday, you know, the food drive, passing out the food, speaking Spanish, vibed out on the game, went to Wendy's, drive through, happy smiling. Wednesday, facility, mean mugging, you know what I mean? That's the vibe. <laughs> For sure. <laughs>it's just nice to feel like I'm, you know, part of the team again, you know, like out there at practice with the guys, that's sort of like, it's, I, w I was rehabbing for a long time and it's sort of like a funny, like could be a movie or something. Cause there's a bunch of glass and I'm in the weight room and then they're practicing. And I just have like my hand on the glass. You know, <laughs> it's gotta be nice to be out there. So it's nice to be out there. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what we're here for football. I mean, Two months plus, what's the biggest challenge about being game ready at this point? Because it has been a while, you know, but I think that the way we do practice here is really great, you know, because there's days where it's uh, the tempo's a bit slower and we're more, it's more uh, mental and all that. Then we have days where we ramp it up and we're going full speed. And the goal is to make practice feel as much like a game as possible. So I think just getting those reps and ramping up over the last couple of weeks and you know, I think it's that that's what makes it easier to hit game speed. I've just been so proud of the guys watching them every game, just, you know, imposing their will up front, running the ball, good protection. And that allows, you know, all the playmakers we have in here to make plays. So it's been a lot of fun to watch and be a part of behind the scenes. And it's more fun to be out there on the scene. I mean, the injury happened. Have you exceeded your, your expectations? What were your thoughts when you went down initially, originally? Were you thinking, oh boy, season ending? I mean, I just, I kind of just had to take it day by day, you know, like it, it, I just, it's hard with these sort of things to not think about the big picture, but it, it's, it's not beneficial to think about the big picture. So I end up just taking it like, how well can I do this rehab exercise? You know, like how much extra stuff can I do to, to get better and then just kind of trust the process and slowly ramp back up to being able to play football again. And so I'm here now and it feels good. What's the key to success for uh, a tackle in a notoriously noisy atmosphere like Seattle is? Just being locked in with, with the silent cadence. Um, I think Yelda does a great job of it. And, you know, I've been able to get a good amount of reps with him, just, you know, seeing, seeing the way he does it and timing everything up and, um, you know, really focusing on plays in the huddle. And, you know, I think Drew made a great point today where he said that you need to know the game plan well enough that even if you miss a word or two, you know the play that's being called. You know where we're at on the field. You know what it's got to be. And so you can fill in those blanks and be ready to go. So that's a big part of it is just locking in the game plan. And even if you don't hear the whole call, you know, you know what to do.